You love to challenge us to bring you the latest and greatest surprises. We have one more surprise. If this is, if this so is. one last surprise. This is it. Jimmy, are you ready? No, no, Are no. you ready? Yeah, no, I'm freaking out. This is not the this Switch. This is the Nintendo Switch. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So, this is the Switch, Nintendo's latest console. Now, there has been a lot of talk about the system, to its specs, functionality, and how it will be able to compete with Microsoft and Sony. However, it doesn't really seem that Nintendo wants to compete with either, as shown within this clip. We're focused on bringing our best entertainment to both the Wii U as well as the NX in the future. So, for us, whatever Microsoft and Sony are doing in terms of talking about new systems, that's for them to fight out in that red ocean. However, if that is the case, then what is Nintendo trying to do with their new console? Or better yet, who is Nintendo really competing against? I am a huge fan of Nintendo. I believe my very first video game I ever played was Super Metroid for the SNES. One of my favorite games of all time, Ocarina of Time, came out for the N64. And the most addicting fighting game I ever played, Smash Melee, came out for the GameCube. So naturally, when the Switch was revealed earlier last year, I grew ecstatic. Especially over the whole play on the whole, play on the whole. <laughs> I mean, especially over the whole play on the go mechanic. But what is Nintendo's motive in designing a console this way? Well, Nintendo is a company and should be treated as such. It also acts as a publisher for a wide variety of games in addition to utilizing its first or second party teams to work on projects. With that being said, let's analyze Nintendo under this financial lens. To meet this end, my battle buddy Arm will detail further. Take it away, man. Now if you take a look at all Nintendo systems as a whole, their home console sales with the exception of the Wii steadily went down with each generation. In terms of handheld devices, there's more of a unique pattern, with the progenitors of each handheld system doing really well in terms of sales, such as the case with the original Game Boy and the DS. The subsequent handheld that built off of these progenitors also did well in sales, but not to the degree as their predecessors. So now we need to find the one challenge, which is a financial one. Nintendo needs to somehow break this declining home console sales trend, like how McIntyre needs to stop listening to Smash Mouth and actually work on his videos. Seriously, it's, it's been one month, man. Ah, you know you love it. But let's move on to Nintendo's targeting demographic. Now, before we move on to who Nintendo is really competing against with the Switch, first we will have to define what exactly is Nintendo competing for. Now, this is where we see the issue coming up whether or not Nintendo is catering towards hardcore or casual consumers. But before that, let's first define what is hardcore and casual in context to this. Lately, we see these terms being thrown all over the place, but what does it really mean? Well, what hardcore and casual means is really just how players play a game. Let's take Smash Melee for example. I can play the game casually, as in the sense I can just play for the sense of having fun and passing time as it was originally intended. At the same time, I can also play the game in a hardcore sense, meaning that there's a deeper metagame that goes beyond the original factors placed by the game. Melee's competitive scene is an example of this. Oh my god! Did you guys oh just see that? Oh my god! Where there's a steep learning curve for newcomers. Wave dashing, L canceling, and other unorthodox techniques are abundant in the sphere. So, back to talking about the Switch. Who is Nintendo targeting? Hardcore or casual players? Well, it seems as though Nintendo is targeting the casual audience in the sense that they want new consumers to play the Switch. Multiple interviews and statements from other prominent game studios have alluded to this. In that end, Nintendo is not necessarily competing with Microsoft or Sony, nor do they even want to. What seems more likely is that Nintendo is trying to compete against smartphones and tablets. What I mean by that is not Nintendo competing with actual phones and such, but rather the games offered on these devices. To fully explain this, let's talk about the Nintendo Wii, the best-selling Nintendo system. Now, there are several reasons why this is the case, but principally, the Wii sold well because it was marketed well towards newcomers, the casual audience. The Wii was released in late 2008, where the first iPhone was released in 2007, and took a few more years for the app revolution to really take place and with it, the near limitless amount of games that ate up the casual market, in which the Wii formerly dominated. 
To bring this into perspective, roughly around 40% of global gaming sales for 2016 are coming from smartphones and tablets. And these numbers are expected to grow as years go by. In fact, mobile gaming in general is on the rise. The casual market is the main component for this recent trend. So, we enter in a unique situation for Nintendo. There are two possibilities to go from here. One possibility is that Nintendo could just compete against Microsoft and the Sony in the sense that they would reveal a higher spec machine. However, this could have adverse effects due to a dangerous curve for the gaming industry as of late. The cost. Game development is becoming more and more expensive recently. One factor that is leading to this is Moore's Law, which is the observation that the number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits have doubled every year since their invention. Now, in context of game development, computer graphics have certainly progressed immensely over the past 20 years. For example, the team behind creating Destiny took around 500 people. While a game such as the first Doom was pretty much created by a small group of friends, the point is game development is steadily becoming more professionalized. While this isn't necessarily by itself a bad thing, it has brought about some negative effects. The rising costs of game development have given rise to higher budgets, which in turn is causing big publishers to invest in already established franchises rather than trying something new. Additionally, the rising cost of game development is also factoring in to why there is a trend going on where game developers are constantly being laid off despite the profound growth of the gaming industry. Graphical progression in technology has been associated with the progression of game development. This held true from the 8-bit era to 64-bit and today. However, this constant need for graphical progression is showing its negative effects, as game development is becoming more and more expensive to make in part because of it, which is showing adverse effects towards the job security of the developers behind the games. However, that is not to say that graphical progression is a bad thing. I just think that these negative after effects needs to be properly addressed. In short, Nintendo probably doesn't want to enter a graphical arms race against Microsoft or Sony simply due to the fact that it's too expensive to keep up and can yield negative effects on the industry as a whole. But now that we've discussed that situation, let's discuss the other possibility, the casual variant, which has Nintendo competing to garner sales from the casual market. The problem is the same casual market which did the Wii so well is being eaten up by games offered by smartphones and tablets. So now Nintendo is in a pickle. Was Nintendo's solution of not entering the graphical arms race with Microsoft and Sony while at the same time selling their system at a competitive volume and taking back lost territory from smartphones? An answer lays in how Japan's gaming industry is heading, which is being dominated more and more by handheld gaming. In fact, you could say that console gaming is dying out in the country. Now, with all this information in mind, it is of little surprise that the Nintendo Switch turned out the way it did. The Switch, in terms of power, is about as powerful as a slightly weaker PS4. However, that could be a good thing for the reasons stated before. Additionally, the system does cater to the casual market by being a handheld device, which is also a doorway to the games on the console scene like Skyrim or Breath of the Wild. In essence, the Switch effectively acts as a bridge between the casual and hardcore markets, in which both audiences can enjoy products from each. In this context, Nintendo's greatest hurdle is not really taking control of the hardcore market, but to cut into the casual one. This way, Nintendo has a competitive edge in garnering consumers from the hardcore scene, but also newcomers as well, by offering an experience in which gaming can be offered on the go. With a Switch, Nintendo is not likely going for power, but rather accessibility for the player. To leave on a quote, this is what President Kimishima of Nintendo had to say on the subject. Our revenue has fallen for 8 straight years. What we aim for is to increase the number of people who play games. We want to deliver all kinds of new surprises to our customers, and it is through their support that our revenue increases. That's the end result. But if that result doesn't show, that means we weren't able to deliver. Next year is when we see the result. In short, Nintendo wants to have more people play on their platform, which makes sense as a company, to include both hardcore and casual markets. But what lays ahead for the future of the Switch? More information about the system is dropping rather soon, so it is only a matter of time until we learn more about Nintendo's latest console. And wow, I really did not expect this video to be a whole theory by itself, but when writing it, it kind of just formed that way. But what do you guys think? Should I do more theories on subjects outside of Zelda? Let me know. And if you enjoyed my voice and maybe you like Zelda as well, go check out my channel. I just uploaded a video about uh, hacking in Wind Waker. Alright, I'll see you then. 
Well guys, the Switch event is just a few days away. I will be streaming the live event on the 12th around 10.30 Eastern. So, if you guys happen to pass by, feel free to say hi in chat. On a separate note, looks like I have to be heading out now, working on a new Zelda theory that should be up rather soon. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Till then, have a great and relaxing rest of the day, and take care.